Hello, um, Sandra and Safia. I'm Alison Jane Reed from Ethical Headness magazine, and we're here at this fabulous People Tree fashion event tonight. Happy Women to launch your collection in collaboration with People Tree. Now, you're known as the princess of punk fashion. Are you now going to be the princess of sustainable fashion? It'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I mean, Why it's not? very nice to wear. I mean, punk could still be sustainable because you can wear things that still have their holes in it. <laughs> well, so yes, and you could recycle. Easily, yeah, you could you recycle. You could recycle yeah. and do things. But in fact, this is all, um, you know, this, this cotton's got such a fabulous feel, it's quite unbelievable. Do you, do you feel that it's got a sort of soft, silky handle? I think it really organic has, cotton really yes. does feel it, it really different. It really does feel different. It's got a thickness about it that's rather fabulous. And a sort of satiny sheen. Yes, I yes. Think. So tell me about meeting People Tree and getting to the stage where you're now in your second collaborative collection. It's been with very People exciting. Tree. I mean, first of all, working with our first collection, which we did in a rush, but then I was lucky enough to have the experience of going all around the cotton growers in Gujarat and things like that, which, which meant that it, it really did um, give an ex you realise the experience and then you suddenly start thinking, oh, it does feel a lot different. It what, does what, feel how great. Did, how did, what was that trip out to India like with, with Safia? Where did you go? And how did it differ from how you have actually produced your clothes? Um, for the past 40 years. Well, I know I you mean, work in a very artisan way. Yes, I've, so seen, I've seen your atelier. It's incredible. Yes. You are a true artisan. So it tends to be. Mine's much smaller scale. So it's great that when it gets to bigger scale to know that someone like Safia doesn't compromise on the whole thing. So why, why did you want to work with Safia? Because I understand that you approached People Tree to do a collaboration through we your like agent. The pro we thought they did a lovely product. I think that I think it's it's very important now to think of sustainability in the future. I don't have any children, but I think it's it's something you should think about what you're taking out of the planet, and if you're going to wear things a bit longer, and if you're going to be a bit more careful with them, and treasure them because when you actually see that what has to go into growing plants and making things work, regardless of what the weather or nature does you can see how we've got to manage to sustain things and keep going. The fashion is, by its nature, uh, in a constant state of flux, isn't it? We're always encouraged to, to buy into the new trend. You know, can think, can fashion be sustainable in that way? I think that was where there was such a, a synergy and a shared set of values and ethos, because I think we, we, we both agree you know, that what, what really we should be doing is, is is actually consuming less fashion and, and consuming more cleverly. Um, you know, yeah, buying, I mean, buying things to keep and treasure, which you would do that with you're going to keep and treasure them, and then if you if you do get a bit fed up with them, maybe you fold them up and get them out again and rethink them. I mean, I think it's terrible that you've got to say every six months that's it. I find when you it think quite of the work that goes into oh, a garment, I mean, you know, I the don't, love, it's an appalling concept, isn't it? I don't concept, have ideas it? to just throw away like that. Let's, let's have a look at your trip um, to India. Um, so where are you here, um, Oh, that's in, in the cotton fields and them showing us how bad and late the harvest had been and then showing me all about it. I must say, when I see this, I really do look like a funny aged peasant because they were very, pink hair. they were so welcoming to us and they gave us all these gifts as we arrived and little scarves. And I was the only one that left my scarf on because I thought, well, it looks a bit grateful. But then when I took the photographs, I look like the old granny being well, shown round there. Let's show the more glamorous picture. <laughs> There's a wonderful picture here, which I'd love everyone to see. To me, this is quintessential oh, Zandra Road. Sketching. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful to have. So, are you sketching in a in a field? In I an was organic sketching. Cotton field? That one isn't in the organic cotton field. That one, I think, is drawing a rather nice black Ganesh when we got down to the, the coastline and we were then seeing the factory where the clothes were going to be made. And so this is actually about, oh, probably about five o'clock in the morning when the it was just getting are, light. The colours are absolutely <laughs> wonderful, aren't they? It's so, so vibrant. Did you get a lot of inspiration um, for your collection 
when you were out in, in India with I haven't with had time even to absorb the inspiration since then and it's been what's been fabulous is the actual inspiration with this collection which is really fabulous and almost re-inspirational to me we look back to the work that I did in the 60s so that we look back to the designs that I did when I just left Royal College with the star, the pop star stars, I and the bright love colours, the star dress. and yes. then the—I could imagine Twiggy wearing it. Oh, that! Oh, that's yes. I think she'd look lovely in it. Well, she'd still look lovely in with it. the collar. Yes, yes. the collar. Just, it looked divine. It's so cute. Yeah. And this was the little Mr. Man that was posted through the doors for the either he was a rainbow Omo man or a rainbow Daz man. And so and this, this is your is Daz all, man print. Yes, it was, and the print, and then downstairs in the museum we've even got some more of my 60s prints with medals and the influence of pop art so it was just fabulous that we looked to that and then ended up doing this print. Now I hear this has gone down a storm in Japan you went on a, on a trip oh, we had a fabulous to Japan. Time in Japan. Well the Japanese just love British so fashion was, talent. And, the, and I think that they're very aware of quality over Mass production, don't yes. you think? I think yeah, I, th I think they, that, I think they love British design. Yes, you know. So yes. that was really, you know, it's really nice to find. I mean, the overwhelming interest in trying to look after the planet. I mean, Japan, you're so aware that people live so economically. Really, in smaller spaces, it, it, it's it, very it, impressive. So there are so many yes. Japanese. Yes. Their streets are like just that, that sort of like, what, two car widths smaller and everything's that bit smaller, but everything works just as well and you don't need more, more, more. I think everyone's so excited about someone who feels as passionately as, you know, as the artisans and the farmers in, in, in really perpetuating this craft and to meet Sandra and just realise the integrity with which she designs and then wants to take everything back, you know, to, to use an organic cotton and through a fair trade supply chain without being put off because it would be very easy to say, oh, you know, well, we can't quite do that drape or thinness of fabric, you know, forget it. Yeah. But I think um, our Japanese team, all the journalists that came to the event, they were really, really excited, yes. weren't they, and impressed that, you know, right through the collaboration, you'd, you'd come out to the fields, you were, you know, really, really happy to work with something that was a yes. fair Yes, so everyone, everyone was very welcoming and everyone wanted to yeah. tell us how they were participating in making this work and then show us their children that were going to the school that had been worked out because we're tr they're trying to do things you know much more ethically. Well I love the idea that we could even know who made your dress Sandra you know because to me I've always wanted to, to buy clothes that I treasure. Yes. I buy the best yeah. I can possibly afford usually you know in sample sales you know having been a fashion journalist my whole career I would buy them very carefully and treasure them and you do put them away and bring them out again yeah. and then it's exciting. I think it's exciting and I don't think it should always be next, next, next. I really don't because I find the effort of doing them and doing and thinking about things is more than that, you know, more than that. Well, what has it meant to you, Sapia, to work with an iconic British designer like Sandra? You know, you know I'm thinking I've known you a long time. Mm. And, you know, we did that amazing shoot with Sienna Miller, mm. which I think was 2005 now. I put Sienna Miller in People Tree, and we oh, had 800 wonderful. phone calls um, at You Magazine on the Monday morning. It had an enormous impact. It was an, in an incredible collaboration. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, to, to work with somebody like Sandra, who's, you know, takes fashion very, very seriously and good design very seriously, but, you know, without question would love to do everything in a, in a completely ethical way you know given the opportunity yes you've, you've been really really great to travel with really great to to, to learn with and i think you know we've, we've we've been really inspired i mean the energy with which you you work and you yes. design is, is, it's, I think it's been co-inspiration <laughs> the other thing we should say is um can we say actually how much a zandra roads at people tree is going to cost because it's going to be a little bit more affordable than buying a couture piece from your main exactly. line. So we want to inspire fashion students and lovers of fashion to invest yes. in a 
in Assange Road at People Tree. Yes. That's so exciting, you know, that your iconic designs yes. are going to be more accessible. And an organic cotton. I think that's really exciting. I but it's so, have no idea it's how so far you've come. It's so wearable and soft, you know. It really oh, is. Organic cotton is just gorgeous. You know. So I want to ask you, um, I recently interviewed Brian May oh, of yes. Queen. Did a big interview with him, and he was saying how you designed um, a All lot of pieces for Freddie for their early outfits. And I've seen the footage from the sh um, from, from one some of, their of those shows. wonderful concerts. Did you enjoy doing that? It was Chris. fun to do. Um, I really enjoyed doing it at the time. You know, well, what was it like to work with Freddie? Because he had this extraordinary stage they both, persona. They both came round after work, and I had this funny little workroom. And so I waited till all the girls had gone, and then I said, oh, you can try anything on, and then see how you feel. So it was Freddie sort of like with his arms out, walking around the room, seeing how he felt, and Brian trying things on. Brian had his outfit stolen, did he tell you? He didn't tell me that. He, I he made said, I didn't realise I was so fashionable, Alison. <laughs> I was so I, I, I love the outfit where you did pleated sleeves for. He him. had three of those because they got stolen. Oh, I have to ask him about I that. I know. Well, had to I'm not surprised. Them. Who wouldn't want to stick but a little under he, He's such a lovely guy, oh, isn't he's he? Really lovely. Really guy. nice. Yeah. He's but I mean, I didn't get to know them at the time. I just made the outfits and saw a couple of concerts. But really, what happened was, is that when. Um, Nick Rock followed the band around and then did those iconic photographs. I then got people asking me about Queen. Right. Not at the time that they were done. No, because I guess it was still really early, wasn't it? The, the footage I've seen. That, um, it was really early, really and they played phase. for they played for Teeny Boppers. Yes. And I went to a concert at I think it was Earl's Court, and it was absolutely packed. But they were all. At that time, they were at least 15 years younger than me. They were all little, but it was packed. And they really made their name all the way across Europe and, and everything, and then built it up, really, once they started to get into that orchestral stuff. Yes, operatic. Yes, um, which I think is fantastic. Concerts, no, they were extraordinary. I wanted to ask you, what was it like to, to dress Elizabeth Taylor to make clothes for Elizabeth? She is one of the I, great icons that you made. Like I before. only met her late in her life when I did a wedding and she spoke to me, but I've got photographs. She must have bought them or been got them at Nima Marcus. I didn't actually fit her. Have you, have you fitted um, people like Helen Mirren? Because I know she's a fan. Helen Mirren was very nice when I fitted her. Yeah, she's, um, a, she's a big fan of your clothes. She said they were the perfect dressing up. Oh, dresses. right, well, I, um, I fitted her. Who would you like to dress amongst the young film stars or At pop the time, princesses? I'd love to have dressed that woman that I think should have got the Oscar for um, Frida Kahlo. I think, said she was this dreadful Valentino. It looked dreadful. Oh, and I could the have made South her American fabulous. actress. Whoops, um, she's wonderful. I've forgotten her name. Well, yes, it's on the so high, right. Yeah. And okay. she wore this Valentino Salma, Salma that terrible. And you would like to have dressed her? I'd have liked to have dressed her. I could have done a good job on her. Now, I want to ask about your famous punk collection, finally. The, oh, right, the, yes. The pink... Oh, pink well, you, and black. You, you're so dismissive. The, the pink and black with the safety pins right. and the, the studs, which I is why you're known proud. as the punk princess. I know. I mean, I love to, loved doing that collection. And they featured it at the Met, which was very you went, nice. You wrote a blog about going yes, to the Met. Yes, I wrote a blog um, about going to the Met. Because someone else thinks um, there's a rival for the, for the sort of queen of punk. What, Vivian? Vivian, yes. Well, but I think you were first. Queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but we were both. I always think well, I mean, it's like the invention of electricity. You've got Edison and Swan. That's a nice way of putting it. Do different things. Mine yeah. was sort of like a, she's always poo-pooed my version anyway. Well, it's fabulous. And do you think we might see it recreated you know, from the, from the archive nice. for People Tree yes. in organic cotton? Yeah. Wouldn't that something. be yes. extraordinary? We could do that. would be a lovely idea. Yes, maybe we will. 
Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra Rhodes and Safi. Well, thank Lily. you for being so focused as the party goes on. Well, that's that's years of journalism and you not killing me on Shepherd's Bush Roundabout. Do you remember that? When you fell asleep? It was so fun. Well, it was terrifying, Sandra. I was shaking you. <laughs> they don't trust me a lot of the time, you know.